Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Mateo. Lately, my dad has been having a hard time paying our bills. I started working part-time at a grocery store to contribute to the family finances. One day, as I was on my way home from work, I got a phone call. The person at the other end of the line said, I'm so sorry to disturb you at this hour. I'm an attorney, and I represent your paternal grandfather. My grandfather had left when my dad was little. They never saw each other again. My family never talks about my grandfather because my dad's still mad at him. Is it possible for you to come to my office tomorrow morning at 8? I need to talk to you about something important. It's imperative you don't tell your parents about this. I thought about the phone call all night. I had a hard time deciding what to do. I was scared of my dad finding out, but I was too curious. Having given it a lot of thought, I went to the address the attorney provided me. Two attorneys showed me into a big meeting room. The younger of the two was clean cut. The older one was the attorney who called me. Thank you for coming. Your grandfather had hoped to meet you in person, but because of the agreement he made with your father, he couldn't get in touch with you directly, he said. What kind of agreement? My grandfather hasn't even seen him since my dad was a little kid, I said in surprise. Six years ago, your father and grandfather met in this very room. That day was the first time they'd seen each other in a very long time. Unfortunately, your dad refused to forgive his father. I came here to tell you to stay away from my family and me, your dad told him. Your grandfather was guilt-ridden, so he accepted your father's request to keep from causing more harm. So why does my grandfather want to see me despite their agreement? I asked. You will find out very soon, he replied. The second attorney turned on the computer. An old man in a hospital bed appeared on the screen. Hey, Mateo, I'm your grandfather. If you're watching this video, it means that I'm no longer alive. I would have liked to get to know you, but I couldn't break the promise I made to your father. I always regretted missing out on watching you grow up or playing games with you. So, I've prepared a little game you can play after my passing. <gasps> Meanwhile, the attorney's assistant put a large briefcase on the table. There's a million dollars in that briefcase. If you can spend that money in 24 hours, then my entire fortune, which amounts to $100 million, will be yours. Refuse or spend a penny less, and my attorneys will donate the money to charity. It's your choice. The assistant opened the briefcase. Sure enough, it was full of money. Here are the rules, Mateo. You can't buy a house, a car, or a business. You must get a receipt for every purchase you make. You can't gift or donate it to anyone. You can only spend it on yourself. Plus, you can't use your phone or go online for 24 hours. Finally, keep this little game of ours a secret. Of course, it's not going to be easy deciding how to spend a million dollars in such a short time. But if you succeed, you will have learned to be smart about your spending by the time you receive your entire inheritance. That's the whole point of the game. Goodbye, my dear grandson. The attorney got up. Your grandfather left it to us to determine when your 24 hours start. It's 8.30 a.m. now. The game begins in 30 minutes at exactly 9 a.m. What? How am I supposed to spend the money today? Why? Because you're not supposed to prepare. It all needs to be spontaneous, the older attorney replied. Arthur, uh, sorry, I forgot again. Justin will accompany you. He will deal with all the payments and collect all the receipts for you. In half an hour, I was out with Justin. As we walked, I thought carefully about how I could spend the money. I saw a car rental company right in front of me at that moment. Of course, I wasn't allowed to buy a car, but I could rent whatever I wanted. I ran into their office. Do you have a private car service? I asked the lady at the desk. What's the most expensive car you have? Do you have a Ferrari? We don't have a Ferrari, she said in surprise, but we do have a Rolls Royce. How much? $7,000 per day, she answered. Justin took out the $7,000 from the briefcase and said, Here's your money. May we have a receipt, please? My first purchase. Only $993,000 left to go. We immediately hopped in the Rolls Royce. Your destination, sir? The driver asked. A light bulb went off in my head. Take us to the most expensive hotel in the city. Uh, please. We got out and headed straight to the hotel reception desk. We'll take the most expensive room you have. The receptionist didn't take me seriously. Our royal suite is very, very expensive, young man. May I suggest a more affordable room option? Though, I doubt you could even afford a deposit. What was with this guy's attitude? We want the royal suite. Just tell me what the rate is, I demanded. 
With a condescending look on his face, the man replied, $125,000 per night, plus deposit and room service fees. Justin took out the money and put it on the desk. Your cooperation is appreciated. I'll take the receipt, please. The guy was shocked. We will, we will prepare your room immediately, sir. It was almost 11 a.m. I was so nervous that I started sweating. I had $868,000 left to spend. As we entered the royal suite, I was amazed. So this is the high life. This isn't a hotel room, it's a small palace, I shouted. What else costs this much? I had to stop myself from reaching for my phone. Instead, I turned to Justin. I wish I could just search online. These are your grandfather's rules, Justin responded. I'm not allowed to give you any hints either. I've got it, I said, snapping my fingers. Let's go for a fancy meal. Our driver took us to the most expensive restaurant in the city. I ordered one of everything on the menu, hoping to spend as much as possible. Each appetizer and main dish looked really cool, but I can't say I liked the taste of any of them. That was until the desserts arrived. The centerpiece was a colossal sundae covered in more than 10 grams of edible gold. It alone cost $44,000, one of the top 10 most expensive desserts in the world. The clock was ticking, and I had $798,000 I needed to spend in the next 20 hours. The worst part was, I had absolutely no idea where to go from there. Of course, there were many places where I could spend the money. I could go to a spa, get a massage, or even rent a yacht or a plane, but the paperwork alone would take hours. I had to think of a place to spend all of the remaining money at once. As we continued cruising the city in our rental car, I saw a sign that said, New York Lottery. Just then, I had a fantastic idea. I could just buy scratch-off cards with all the money. I asked the driver, can you pull over to the right side? We need to get off here. I turned and smiled <laughs> confidently at Justin. Get the rest of the money. We're spending it all. Justin looked around. Really? Where can we do that? He asked. You'll see, I replied. When we approached the lottery entrance, Justin knew what I was about to do. Very interesting. However, you'll need to spend all of your winnings within the time limit as well. You realize that, right? He asked. I know. I'll win some money from the scratch-off cards, but I'll just buy more scratch-off cards with my winnings. I have to run out of money at some point, I replied. Who's the owner of this place? I inquired. Five people were working there. An older gentleman stepped up from behind the counter. Right here. I want to buy $798,000 worth of scratch-off cards, I said. They all burst out in coarse laughter. <laughs> Son, find some other business to play around with. We're too busy to entertain you. The boss cackled gruffly. Justin put the briefcase on the desk, opened it, and showed them the money. Their jaws dropped in stunned silence. But I have a request, I said, leaning over the counter. We need to scratch off all the cards I buy, right here, right now. I'll pay each of you $10,000 to close for the day and help me. Deal? The boss showed me the boxes filled with scratch-off tickets. $10,000? Each? Whatever you say. But it'll take us quite a bit of time to scratch off all of them. Everyone except Justin got to work scratching the tickets. No one said a word. Only the gentle scratching sounds filled the room. Occasionally, someone would break the silence with, Hmm, I got $500, or got $5,000 here. Before I knew it, midnight came. We were running out of tickets to scratch. Up to that point, we had won $85,000, which I used to buy more scratch-off cards. I was so close to beating my grandfather's game. Before long, I'd be back at the Royal Suite sleeping like a baby. I'd show up at the attorney's office at 9 a.m. sharp, and just like that, I'd inherit my grandfather's $100 million fortune. Suddenly, I heard the lotto boss scream as I was deep in thought. No way! This is the biggest prize anybody's ever won in my store! One million dollars! You won one million dollars, son! My heart sank at the worst news I'd ever gotten in my entire life. I was back to square one. I had a million dollars again. I had bought out the store's entire stock of cards, even the reserves in the back room. There were none left, and I didn't have time to scratch them all off. Besides, I couldn't risk winning another grand prize. What was I going to do? Where could I possibly spend all that money with less than nine hours on the clock? Well, you have another problem, Justin said. We spent all the cash in the briefcase. Right now, all you have is a single ticket worth a million dollars. Since you don't have time to exchange it for cash, you'll have to spend it on a single item. Ugh, as if the challenge wasn't hard enough already, I replied. 
That thought stopped me in my tracks. I couldn't give up. I still had nine hours. But it's not impossible. Let's get out of here. I'm gonna spend this ticket no matter what. We started driving around in the Rolls Royce we'd rented. What's worth a million dollars can be paid with a lottery ticket and follows the rules of my grandfather's game. As I was pondering all this, we stopped at a red light. I realized I hadn't eaten yet when I saw a hot dog cart on the corner. Justin laughed aloud when he saw me staring at the hot dogs on the cart. The millionaire doesn't have a penny to spend on a hot dog. <laughs> New York really has seen it all. Justin told the driver to stop. I'm famished myself. I don't think it's against the rules to stop for a hot dog. The taste of that hot dog beat the $70,000 meal I had for lunch by a mile. I practically swallowed it whole. Behind us was a giant Justin Bieber concert poster. Is that you performing tonight? I laughed sarcastically, pointing at Justin next to me. I know. Normally I'd be there, he responded. <gasps> really? Are you missing the concert because of me? Sorry, man. Justin shrugged. That's okay. As someone who's been to 78 Justin Bieber shows, it's not a big deal if I don't make it to this one. 78 concerts? I asked in surprise. I never would have thought a pencil-pushing lawyer like you would be a believer. I've never thought of myself as a pencil pusher, Justin replied casually. Plus, my dad, you met him yesterday morning. He's the lawyer, not me. So my grandfather's attorney is your dad? I had no idea. So what turned you into a believer? Justin began to tell his story. It's no big deal, really. You know how Justin Bieber was discovered through YouTube? I wanted to be a singer, too. Justin was my role model in high school. I even modeled my style after his, so I thought I was guaranteed to succeed. When my dad found out I had started a YouTube channel, he was furious. These videos are the fastest way to destroy your future, son, he yelled. You're going to stop this nonsense at once and study law like a real contributing member of society. That night, my dreams of becoming a star were crushed. He made me delete my channel. When I turned 18, I changed my name from Arthur to Justin out of spite. I never gave my dad the satisfaction of seeing me go to law school either. I'm sorry that happened. How come you still work with your father even after all that? I asked. Justin replied, I have no choice right now. I'm taking music courses, but my dad doesn't know. When I graduate, I'll become a singer. Look, my dad isn't all bad though. He cares and everything. It's just, I want to live my life in my own way. It's my biggest dream to do backup vocals for him, he said, turning to the billboard behind us. Right then, a light bulb went off in my head. Well, let's go then, I shouted in excitement. Justin had a confused look on his face. Where? To realize your dream, I said as I got out of the car. I was crushed when we made it to the venue where the Bieber concert was supposed to be. There was no one around except two guys sweeping the floors. The show was over. When did the concert end? I asked them. An hour ago. One replied. Has Justin Bieber left? I asked. He opened his arms wide and shrugged. Come on, I said, turning to Justin. We gotta find a way backstage. Bieber might still be around. We rushed out the door and to the other side of the building. In a matter of minutes, we arrived at a small door that read VIP entrance. There must have been at least a hundred believers at the door screaming, Justin! Justin! <gasps> Told you, I said with a reassuring glance. Justin, the attorney's son, was so excited. I know what you're thinking, but Mateo, it's a long shot, he said. Where there's a will, there's a way, I said confidently. At the entrance, security guards had formed a human chain. The fans were pushing to get in every few minutes. The bouncers checking for VIP passes from each one. We'll never get by those big guys, I said to Justin. I think I know another way in. We ran back to the venue entrance. The cleaning guys were just finishing up. We need to see Justin Bieber, I said, showing them my million-dollar prize lottery ticket. At first, they seemed annoyed, angry even, but their eyes grew wider when they saw the jackpot on the ticket. Lend us your uniforms and I'll give each of you $100,000 each tomorrow morning, I assured them. The men looked at each other. What do we got to lose? One of them said. How about our jobs? The other replied. It won't matter if we got 100 grand apiece, the first one pleaded. Reluctantly, the second worker agreed. We switched our clothes with the cleaning crew, allowing us to freely walk around the building. We headed backstage without delay. My heart was pounding as we got to the VIP room. Bieber himself was walking toward the exit with his guards and his manager. I was about to faint. At the last second, I called out, Justin! Justin! The guards made a move to prevent me from coming closer. Bieber called off the guards. Do you guys want to take a photo? 
he said politely. You guys gotta be exhausted as me after an incredible show like that. Always happy to show my thanks to the crew that made it happen. I couldn't believe what was happening. Justin Bieber was actually thanking us because he thought we worked there. We're here for something else. Justin, you, you're my last chance, I said. Justin Bieber squinted, surprised by my words. His manager interrupted. Justin, you've had enough action tonight. Let's go. Justin Bieber never broke eye contact with me. Hold up. I'm curious. What do you mean, I'm your last chance? He asked. Of course, I couldn't tell him about my grandfather's little game, but I knew how I would spend the million dollar prize. We'd like to pay you for a private concert tonight. Justin Bieber laughed. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? I mustered up the courage to say, just three songs. How much would that cost? I asked. More than you could afford. Bieber's manager scoffed. He's exhausted right now. We got a long road ahead of us. How much? I asked. By now, Justin Bieber was watching us intently. Only six feet away from his idol, my friend Justin was tongue-tied. A million dollars, the manager said condescendingly. You can go tomorrow and get a million dollars in exchange for this, I said, showing him the scratch-off ticket. The man took a good look, scratching his chin. He turned to Justin Bieber and said, The kid's not lying. Bieber said, Guys, this is getting wild. You can keep your scratch-off ticket. I'm out. My heart dropped as Justin Bieber turned and began to walk away. This couldn't be it, could it? After everything we'd gone through, after every stroke of luck, I simply couldn't accept defeat. That's when I heard my friend Justin's voice behind me. He was singing the most incredible melody, turning every head in the room toward his voice, including Bieber's. Justin finished, his voice shaking with emotion. Singing back up on stage with you has always been my dream, he said. Bieber was so moved. Tell the band to get ready, he said to his manager. I'm sure they'll be okay with going back on stage if you tell them they'll make an extra million dollars tonight. <laughs> Justin and I hugged each other in excitement, hardly able to believe that we'd actually pulled it off. Justin Bieber sang three songs for me that night. My friend Justin did the backup vocals. The best part was that Justin Bieber loved his performance so much that he offered my new friend a job. By 2.46 a.m. that morning, the game was complete. I had finally earned the right to inherit my grandfather's hundred million dollar fortune. When the morning came, it was time to return to the attorney's office. When we arrived, my dad was waiting for me in the meeting room along with my grandfather's attorney. He had tears in his eyes as he opened his arms wide to give me a hug. Your grandfather left me a video telling me everything. You deserve that money, he said. <laughs> but did you forgive him too? I asked. He replied, Your grandfather talked at length about how he regretted everything he'd done. When he was alive, I thought he was faking it to save face. But if he's still saying the same things even after his passing, I guess he meant it all along. To this day, we live in my grandfather's mansion. Apparently, he'd had the entire house renovated just for us, as if he was sure we would be moving in. After Justin's graduation from music school, the two of us went into the music business together, going on to produce records for several platinum artists. I'm super proud of everything we've accomplished, and I know my grandfather would be too.